when you proceed. So you gonna warn me when I'm at three minutes? Yes. A card will be raised. Well, terrorism in the Middle East. Terrorism in the Middle East has been going on since the Zionist movement first began to settle Jews in the area which was then the Palestinian mandate after World War One. The Arabs who lived in the Palestinian mandate, which is formerly prior to World War One, but controlled by Turkey, resented any increase in Jewish population, which would threaten their existence and their culture. There were acts of terrorism by Arabs against Jews in the 20s and 30s. And in 1943, when Malcolm Begin left the Polish brigade that had gone to Palestine to fight with the Allies against the Germans, the Ergun, the Haganah, the Turn Gang of the Jewish settlements commenced, in effect, a war against Arab residents in that area and vice versa. It's hard to say who were the more guilty. The Jews at that time felt that they had a right to rebut, but rebel against the British Palestinian mandate. Fagan wrote, wrote a book called The Revolt in which he justified blowing up the King David Hotel. He justified hanging two police sergeants of the British Army as an example to the British that the Jews were going to fight until they got their own country. In 1947, the United Nations adopted UN Resolution 181 of the General Assembly, providing for the partition of what was Palestine at that time into two areas, a Jewish area and an Arab area, with the city of Jerusalem to remain under international control. On May 15th, the British mandate expired, the State of Israel came into existence, was immediately re recognized by the United States and by the Soviet Union, and I think it's fair to say for the next 20 years until 1967, nowhere recognized the validity of either the UN resolution or the State of Israel, and the Arabs generally tried in every possible way to destroy that state through acts of violence. Now, what has the violence become today? Since 1967, when Israel occupied the West Bank, what they call Judea and Samaria, the Gaza Strip, East Jerusalem, and the Golan Heights, the Arab world has generally justified acts of violence to deny that occupation of the West Bank and the other occupied territories. The United Nations adopted a resolution 242 requiring that Arabs accept the Israeli state and that Israel give up the West Bank the Golan Heights and the occupied territories. In 1974, Chairman Arafat of the PLO, which had been formed in 1965 and had conducted acts of violence until that time, Arafat ordered the PLO to cease all acts of international terrorism. And I want to read to you from the State Department white paper that came out on January 8th to justify President Reagan's sanctions against Libya. The uh, the State Department white paper said very explicitly that the Abu Nadal group, not the PLO, is responsible for the bulk of the terrorism of the last five years. And I quote, the group was formed in 1974 after Arafat instituted a ban on PLO involvement with international ter terrorism outside Israel and the occupied territory. Abu Nadal has been responsible, I think, for most of the acts of terrorism subsequently. The people that commit those acts are generally young Palestinians, although not all. They are people who oppose the occupation of the West Bank and believe there must be a Palestinian homeland, and until there is a Palestinian homeland, they will commit acts of violence to achieve it, just as the Jews did in 1947. Thank you. Rabbi Kahan, two minutes for rebuttal. There's no question that Arab terror is rooted in one particular fact a refusal on the part of the Arabs to recognize the existence of a Jewish state of any size, of any shape, and of any form. And in 1967, when Israel faced with a concerted attack by all the Arab states, including such moderates as Jordan, struck back and liberated Samaria and Judea, we now hear that the obstacle to peace today is the occupied lands of 1967. 
I never really understood why in 1947 the Arabs attacked Israel. Now I do. What was bothering them in 1947 was clearly the occupied lands of 1967. <laughs> in 1929, in Hebron, 67 Jews were murdered in cold blood. Clearly, what was bothering the Arabs in Hebron in 67 was the occupied lands of 1967. Two weeks ago, when I was still in Israel, a taxi driver was murdered in the city of Lida, Lod. A Soviet Jew had arrived in Israel. Credit for it was taken by Fatah of Arafat, not anyone else. One month ago, a soldier, Moshe Levi, hitching a ride near Petrotikva in the heart of Israel, was murdered and burned. Credit was taken for it by Fatah. There are no Arab moderates. The trouble is that we want to believe it. Arab moderates kill Jews moderately. We are faced with an attempt on the part of Arabs who attempted to wipe out Israel physically beginning in the 1920s, long before there was Israel or Kahana or Beit or Shalom. Having been defeated in five wars, and knowing that they cannot beat Israel through war, through violence, an effort is now being made for a salami tactic. 67 boundaries, and after that, perhaps the 47 boundaries. And when Hussein of Jordan announced that he would that he would accept 242, 338, he also said that it would be within the context of all of the UN resolutions, including the first one, which he turned down, which they turned, turned down and which would bring the Arabs back to, to the 1947 boundaries. Arab terror is rooted in one fact. They refuse to recognize the existence of the state of Israel. Mr. McCloskey, two minutes for rebuttal, which indicates to you, the audience and the speakers, I apologize for having made a mistake. Each answer can be four minutes, and then the rebuttal of the first debater who responds is two minutes. How about the lights? Lights. Lights, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, the beloved electronic media, television, as soon as you can. Go ahead, Mr. McCloskey, two minutes. Let me uh, just add a personal experience. Uh, one thing that I think causes terrorism, and I would define terrorism as crime, committed in the interest of what's perceived as a national or a group of function. To the terrorist, he's striking out against injustice or oppression. The Israeli response in southern Lebanon to an act by a Shiite against an Israeli soldier has been to destroy a village or to bulldoze the home of an entire family if a young person from that family threw a rock at a passing Israeli truck. That concept of an eye for an eye, or a tooth for a tooth, or ten teeth for ten teeth, as Bacon has put it, has led many, many people in the Arab world to consider acts of terrorism. I visited West Beirut in 1982, in late July. The Israelis had been given the cluster bomb by the United States, a weapon of devastating impact on civilians. It throws a lot of little bombs over an area of about 25 acres in size, and they go off five-minute intervals for about 30 minutes and generally hit the old people and the children, not the soldiers who understand them. Israel violated that agreement with us, used the cluster bomb. I found them all over West Beirut. And on one occasion, we walked down uh, the street in West Beirut with uh, a congresswoman named Mary Rose Okar, who came from Syrian background. She asked a lady who was in the street poking under the rubble of a collapsed apartment building that had been devastated by the Israeli Air Force. She said, what are you looking for? And the lady responded, I'm looking for the body of my son, or excuse me, my daughter. Her son, who was 12 years old, pointed a finger at me and he said, you Americans have killed my little sister. To him, it was American weapons, American bombing that had killed his little sister. That young man would be 18 at the present time. And I suspect that he might very well have conceived that the massacres of Shabra and Shatila, the conduct of the Israeli Air Force, 
mocking these huge bombs through a city of 600,000 people would justify an act of terrorism on his part. I think that many of these young people are the terrorists of the day who have survived the refugee camps of the last 20 years. Question number two, Rabbi Kahana. In your opinion, how should the world respond to the latest acts of Arab terrorism? First of all, they have to begin to understand that they have to reject the nonsense that we've just heard here 